Hello, hello, and welcome to the Train Buddy Shop once again. We're delighted to see you today. Uh, we're going to do some more end scale. Um, we've got a couple interesting engines here. One of them uh, is a uh, an SD60. Okay, so we see that one there. This is uh, happens to be an Atlas uh, model, and we have another one, which is. Um, also an atlas number which is a s a dash it's a dash 840 840b um and so both these being susquehanna the particular um uh, gentleman that that wants this uh, project done uh, uh, like susquehanna so here we go so we get both of those and we have a number of choices so i'm going to kind of split these out here for you let's take uh, let's take the 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 smaller engine first the 840b and let's look at our choices we actually have a number of choices here uh, and I and you know I own a own a shop don't tell anybody I own a train shop and I have all I have every option here available to us uh, for for this particular scenario here we've got We've got uh, for this smaller engine, we have the uh, by TCS an AMD4, um, and you can see uh, again it's a fairly fairly small decoder. That's this that's the decoder. I don't know if you can see it through the through the paper or not. Um, they they all look alike because guess what? Um, they're drop-ins for this particular locomotive. Um, we have a, we have by Digitrax we have a a decoder also in there it's it's very visible on this one you know what's what's going on there it's going to focus a little bit um, but the um, but it's a it's a DN 163A0 and look at all the different engines that this fits and and again if you would look at the AMD4 and look at look at the uh, same list is there lots and lots of different engines so this will be uh, uh, one that uh, we can use in a lot of N-scale uh, situations, and so this is a good video for that. Uh, we also could do sound in this, believe it or not, and uh, we have a couple of options here. Uh, one of them is the uh, Digitrax, um, we'll call that the low-cost option here, SD, SDN144A0, and actually what, it do, what they did was they took the, the A0 form factor, um, and they added a sound chip to it, and uh, as you can see, a, uh, a speaker and a capacitor for the for the speaker. Um, and we can talk more a little bit about that later. But in this situation, notice that the speaker is a, such a such a form factor, and they have instructions here on on what to do with the particular engine. So we'll get into that. Um, there are there are other options, um, and uh, one of them is soundtracks, and uh, I actually didn't pull that one, uh, but I'm going to pull it right now. So uh, hold on while I go do that. Okay, so in in this particular case, um, I have an interesting um, scenario. Uh, 885002. Now, if you look at this decoder here, you'll see it's an 885001. Um, this is a Tsunami 2. This is top of the line stuff if you wanted to use it. This is for the AMD. The one for the um, for the General Electric, which this is a GE uh, model. The Dash B40B is General Electric, and so this would this wouldn't be right. I do not have, believe it or not, the 885002 in stock, although I will probably get it this week. If you look at the the size of this decoder, um, again, uh, you know, typically little finger size. It's not it's not very big. It will easily fit in this particular engine. As I put it down close to the engine, you'll see. And um, it this particular one is not. Uh, it's kind of kind of in between uh, the newer ones that came out. Uh, Soundtracks has gotten rid of the purple, 
uh, and they've got a uh, now a white wrapper that says Tsunami 2 on it, uh, the shrink shrink wrap that goes around the decoder. You'll see that here on the Economy decoder. So the Economy decoder, which is uh, notice is less expensive, but it's not quite the right sound. In this particular case, it may be very very close, uh, but you can pick the exact sound out and the exact whistles and bells and, and whatnot with this decoder. So that's the one of the differences in, in price here. But uh, there's a lot of other features to Tsunami 2 and you can look on Soundtracks' website for, for those features. Um, I am a Soundtracks dealer and a Digitrax dealer and a TCS dealer so um, I've got all of these typically in stock. So if you're, if you're looking for well which one do I go with We'll talk about that as we go through the, the series here. So this is good education on which one you should use for, for what. Um, if you're going to use either one of the Soundtracks uh, decoders for, for this engine, you're going to need an external speaker. Notice they've got the capacitors that came, come with it, but the speakers do not. Uh, Digitrack, or Soundtracks makes a speaker. Uh, this is not it. This is, this is close to it, the, the 8101-54. Uh, about the same price too is their mini cube speaker about the same size the big difference here is note on note on the package it says 32 ohms see it 32 ohms okay and while we want an 8 ohm speaker and that's what uh, an 8101-54 is is an 8 ohm speaker um, we probably would not use this with the soundtracks um, uh, devices they are looking for an 8 ohm speaker output uh, there's uh, you know I'm going to verify that uh, and look in the look in, on the screen I'll, I'll put something there if it's different than what I just said but um, I've been using 8 ohm speakers successfully with the soundtracks new soundtracks decoders tsunamis and economies so we have a multiple choice here, and um, I can't tell you which one I'm going to do yet. Um, I can't do them all, um, and obviously we could do this in in different films and and whatnot. So we'll we'll do those. The the customer for these will be here uh, shortly. Actually, um, expect him in about 45 minutes or so, and so I'm going to. Um, uh, give him these options because I need to do this this week. So I'm going to stop the the recording right here and um, and we'll finish this. We'll get into this um, system here uh, after I decide or after he decides which one of these he's going to go after. Um, I may open it up a little bit here. I get like I say up 45 minutes so I'm going to uh, spend a little bit of time with that. Alrighty then. We're going to uh, get started on this locomotive. Um, I'm going to I'm going to go ahead and zoom in on it um, so we can because it's end scale makes a makes a better picture and um, let me see where's my little uh, da -dum -da -dum. what do I do with the uh, foam? Oh here it is. Okay. So we get, a, get our little, little foamy do foam cradle out um, and uh, start taking this thing apart. Now, um, the, the, um, uh, the customer has said that this is a, it already has a lens decoder in it, so um, he's looking for me to replace that. The, the replacement of, of a decoder, especially in an N-scale engine, is just as intensive as the um, as putting one in from the beginning. Um, the opening of many of the end scales, uh, they have a, uh, and you can kind of see it here on the on the picture. They have a split frame, so they have a split frame, um, well, split frame, and they have a motor that's inside the split frame. So let's let's go ahead then and. And get into this. Uh, one of the easiest ways, especially if you can see where the coupler itself is um, is attached to the body, which many of these are. Um, an easy way to do this is to just 
do this. I don't know if you knew that or not, but there you go. That's how you get into these and get into them quick. Uh, unlike the HO ones where it's a real pain to, to get into them in, in an end scale, it's pretty easy to get into one of these. And we'll set the shell aside and, and look at what we have here. Here's our, our lens decoder uh, with a, a little cover over the light. This is to keep light from coming out of, so if you see the see the um, uh, cab, the cab is is open and so it keeps the light from coming out. Now that's that was specifically true and they put those in there when the light on there was an incandescent light and not a an LED. Um, in today's environment, i turn this around, this is the way I want it. Um, in today's environment the the LED is only shines forward this way, and so there isn't much light that comes out the side. But it, here again, this is a shield just to make it so it doesn't look look goofy uh, with light everywhere. And um, in order for us to get get the decoder out, we have to split the frame now, and, a, and the frame has got two um, small screws that hold it together. And so we're going to take those apart. But when you take uh, an end scale engine apart with the two screws. I've got my th my finger over here on the on the nut that's on this side, so we're going to pull this screw out, okay? And um, and I'm only going to going to kind of start the other one, so you see the other one right there. And um, did I not get the right size screwdriver? Let's get a bigger bigger one. And, when you, and I kind of kind of started a little bit because not only does it hold the two halves and the decoder together, but it also holds the the wheels together. And in this particular one, you need to take this piece off here, the 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 uh, gas tank or diesel, you know, fuel tank. Fuel tank is the proper term. You need to take that off. And the orientation of it is is um, where this has got like two little nibs here and one here and you turn it over and it's got two two and one so it's almost like it doesn't matter um, usually the fill tube is closest to the engineer's engineer side so looking at it this way uh, here's the here's the engineer the fill tube would be here now this is this is true on lots of engines and we'll see that later on but that's typical this particular one has got looks like they they, they got fill tube yeah yeah well see they, they they've done this where here's the fill tube and the and the meter and you turn it over and here's the fill tube and the meter and it's and it doesn't matter which way you do it um, Inside though they've got some ribs on it, so we'll we'll work on that and see what's going on there. Um, anyways, when once you see it fell out, once you take the screws out and you've taken this part off, then now it's able to spread and the wheel sets fall out. Um, they go back on fairly easy. You've got a couple of of, uh, of springs here that are the pickups, and they pick up so that. Uh, uh, left and right rail is actually now both of these are energized so anything any piece of metal that goes between these two shorts it um, you can see that you can see down inside and see the the gears that are there and the motor um, these um, we're gonna see how the motor now comes the motor leads come up and touch the inside of the coder I'm gonna split this and I'm gonna use a little screwdriver just to to give it a nudge here, give it a nudge, give it a nudge. I don't really want everything to fall out. I want to have enough space in here where the decoder itself will just come out. And so I'm nudging, 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 and you can start to see the the pads for the electric uh, picking up from the side frames here. Now we're going to have to give it a smidge more uh, loosening on the nuts. That one's okay, that one's okay. All right, let's again, push, push, push. There, I, I felt a little crack as, didn't hear it, but I felt it. 
And now we're at the situation where the whole thing will come apart if we if we let it. I'm going to um, just push the decoder out. Be very careful. We don't want to destroy the decoder. He may be able to resell this lens decoder to somebody else. And there we go. So we're we're in, and uh, I want to share with you that there's two. Um, two little little nibs that that show here those two nibs are from the motor and left and right and if we take the decoder and we flip it over da -da, see those two pads so the two pads that are right here right well, come on focus yeah focus uh, there we go uh, anyways the two pads that are there um, and you can kind of see them here. Uh, are yeah, they're now you're going to focus. Uh, the two pads that are here are for the motor mounts, and so it's very difficult uh, when you're putting these kind of, of decoders in with these tabs that are kind of just laying there. The pressure has to be down on the the uh, pickups in order for this to run. So a lot of people will put these decoders in and not realize that this has to be super clean and all the rest of that and they actually have to have some some spring tension up on on the insides of those to make that work um, and uh, so they'll they'll install a decoder and everything will work except the motor and and uh, it's always that's the problem and the motors there all right so we're going to go with a um, we're going to take a look at now the two that we would ordinarily use here as just a straight decoder. Um, this being the the Soundtracks one, right? And this one being the TCS one. Um, the the customer has not expressed a preference. He just says, you know, fix it, um, replace it with with one that has LEDs on it uh, and uh, with LED headlights. Okay, so. Um, I'm not quite sure what the problem is because this one looks like it already has an LED on it. Uh, hmm. So maybe he didn't realize that it was LEDs. Now these may be weak. That may be the issue. Uh, in any case, we're going to set that aside. That's the that's the lens decoder, and we're going to give him one that has some some fairly bright um, uh, ones. I would suspect that he would want a Digitrax. Uh, just because look at look at the difference in in price um, MSRP and uh, MSRP and retail on these MSRP is retail here uh, retail in some shops is higher than this but this is the manufacturer suggested and you can see the train buddy I, I discount these but in any case um, the $42 versus $29, let's call it a $10 difference, which is almost 50%. No, well, whatever, 25%. But uh, $10 difference almost in this. Uh, some people say, well, so why? Why would I want a TCS decoder instead of a Digitrax decoder? Now, I'm not going to tell you that one is better than the other. Um, the, the TCS decoder uses a different methodology to drive the drive the motor. TCS decoder uses a uh, field effect transistor or field effect yeah, FET uh, type type device, and uh, it is it is fundamentally different in the way that motor is driven. They dr drive it by by current. Uh, versus a voltage pulse width modulation. So you'll see this in a lot of motor controls. Pulse width modulation PWM, and I may even in the in the description here of the uh, when I'm doing a video. Let me see if I can get some some pictures and whatnot and put them in the side there. I may even do it down in the bottom. But we're gonna we're gonna use the Digitrax one. Um, if you're doing very slow speeds, uh, the, the the TCS does have an advantage at slow speeds, and they run cooler. Um, most people don't do switching and whatnot, especially with these larger engines. Uh, this is the Digitrax one, and they have given us they have given us a piece of Captain tape on the on the decoder. All right, and I want you to see something very important here. 
that wasn't on the the lens decoder. So we're going to pull the captain tape back. We're, we actually have our own captain tape, but isn't that nice that they kind of give you captain tape? And you'll see why in a moment. But notice that in this particular decoder, they have they have put slots now, slots here and here. Instead of that pressure, they see they have pressure on the bottom, so if you want to just use pressure, you could do that. But they put slots in there so that you can actually pull up these um, these tabs through the the decoder and fold them over. All right, and you get a better um, better uh, 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 conductivity. You get better. Yeah, conductivity, because now you're not dependent upon the um, dependent upon the pressure of these on the inside. So what we're going to do first of all is we're going to straighten these out. Okay, we're going to straighten these out to go into the the Digitrax decoder, mm -hmm. like this and like that. And it looks like the harder one is going to be the outside one. So we're going to take our time here with this. And I hope, hope my, my hair doesn't get in the way here, but uh, take our time with this one. And I'm going to push from the outside with my, my thumb to get it out there where we can see it. All right. And we're going to lay this up here in here. Now, I'm fairly sure that this is the way it goes. With the with the chips down because you see the LEDs there are at the at the top. Um, let me just check the documentation before I get too far into this. I'm I'm going by memory and I really should be going by what it says. So I'm gonna look at the look at the documentation and we're gonna see what it says and we're gonna look at the orientation here and notice right notice here that it talks about. Same things we were discussing. Brass motor contacts inserted through the decoder board, and notice that the that the the light is up, right? And the the big chip, which is the the chip for the um, uh, the mic microprocessor chip, is down, which is exactly the way we have it oriented here. Okay, so we're we're in good shape. Um, lucked out, kind of. Didn't really look at. I mean, I kind of I've done so many of these. Okay, so now we're going to take, I'm going to try to place the board in, and get that little tab to go up through that hole, and the holy nightmare. Okay, so so this is where, this is where the the other types, which are just pressure on the bottom, they kind of, they they kind of win out on this. I'm going to get the tiniest screwdriver I can. And I'm still trying to not to get my hair in the in the picture. I've learned this is this is where that happens when I'm trying to do this. Um, and and you got to line the line this up with. I know it's so hard to say. Line this now now tab right up with this hole so that it goes in there. Well, you kind of have to play this game. This is a game here. You get this down and put this on the other side of the board. So you put my little screwdriver in there and kind of pull it this way. I don't know if you're getting any of this. Um, pulling it this way and then push the board in underneath and holy cow, right? So this is why they pay the pros to do this stuff. It's like, what a mess. <laughs> It's almost like somebody engineered it and never never put one in, right? The, the approach is supposed to be, you're supposed to just drop it over there and it's supposed to work. And and if you just saw what I did, I just bent it over, right, to try to get traction on where the hole was. And by doing that, I've kind of kept it from going through the hole. So it's like, oh, geez. All right, so now I'm, I'm going to try a different approach. I'm going to try the try it going the other way, going from the other side, but I got to get that one through the hole too. All right, so da -dum, da -dum, da -dum, da -dum, da -dum. I might want to read the instructions and see if they've got some some magic for this magic way to make this happen. 
I got one. Okay, I got the I got the one on the opposite side came through. Okay, so this one is a little bit off center. That may be part of the problem. It's off from the from where it's supposed to be. Mm, so we're still we're still playing. Oh, I see. So down here at the bottom, I may have to push push that this way. What the heck? What the heck? Okay, what's going on with that? Oh, that's plastic there. Okay. All right. So it's got plastic on the on the motor. Still having a problem getting that tab in on on that side. And it appears as though the the measurement from here to here is off. Um, because the the tab itself, you can't see it, but the tab itself is right where the screwdriver is, and notice it's off by. Oh, good good ten thousandths almost okay so we'll we're going to try to move that I can I can move it like this with the screwdriver but having having a hard time getting it in here so um, you understand I guess what the concept is or what what I'm trying to do um, rather than spend a lot of minutes struggling with this I'm gonna I'm gonna go ahead and uh, cut the video um, and then uh, work it out and come back. All right. So I was successful here and I you can see this on the on the video. Um, and I have have actually bent over the two tabs. I've bent one motor tab this way and the other one this way. Um, which is against the so they come up and I bent them back. Comes up and bent it back. And um, this is sufficient typically to to make this work we should be we should be ready to go now i mean all i really have to do is tighten this up put the trucks on and we should be ready to go i'm gonna try that and if it doesn't work out right um we have now exposed copper uh, with the the motor leads and the exposed copper top up here um, on the board we can put a drop of solder there and here to uh, to maintain conductivity and we'll probably will do that but I want to make sure the decoder works uh, probably should have checked the decoder before we started all that good stuff and I uh, want to make sure the lights work and and everything else is together so I'm going to go ahead and and reassemble this I'm not going to uh, um, say any more than unless we have to do troubleshooting typically the pads that are here and I, you didn't see me do this and uh, and I may shoot myself for not doing it but the pads which go go into the frame here and here and here and here and you can see them exposed here right here and here um, those oftentimes uh, from the manufacturer and notice the board slides a little bit see a board really shouldn't slide back and forth okay that's an indication that the 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 previous board in there was thicker and so the little fingers that are that are molded into the the metal here are not touching the sides uh, because there's four points um, and it's kind of resting in there and it's from the bottom and the top uh, which means there's eight points of contact here oftentimes that's not an issue but it can be and when it is then we will slide little pieces of metal in there to try to try to get the contacts up uh, but this is a first first shot at mechanically getting it all in there. So let's go ahead and and uh, and I won't bore you with the mechanics of putting it on, which is not much. Just tightening two nuts, um, putting putting the 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 shroud, the light shroud on, putting the gas or fuel tank on, putting the and and at that point w with the trucks on, actually we just probably put the trucks on and, and tighten two screws and test it. Um, before we do anything else because there's no sense if we got issues here we don't want to uh, have to take it back apart so hold on for a second while I do those two minor little things alrighty then so the test was successful and um, 
the it had uh, some issues with pickup, and so we're gonna we're gonna solve those with some lubricant. Um, but I also want to at this point, because I know this becomes an issue over time, is go ahead and tack those motor leads down. Um, this means that this will this will be tougher to get out and ch change. But I've already tested the decoder and the motor and the lights and everything looks really good. So. Um, we're going to just tack those, and I'm going to uh, leave the display on so you can you can watch me tack these, and uh, and get some idea of of how delicate this an operation this is. I'm going to try to keep my hair out of it. Um, usually, I would not do it. I would be up really close to these, so this uh, may not go as planned. I'm going to put my glasses on. That's not how I usually do this. All right, here we go. So make make sure that the that there is rosin. Um, I've got a new um, new fan, right? So I won't turn I'll turn that on so you can see there's a lot of noise there. So, so I'm not going to use the fan. I got a new fan that um, that drags the the rosin smoke. The rosin smoke is what is what is bad for you. Um, thousand two one thousand. Um, again, I don't want to spend more than a couple seconds on each one of these. One thousand, two one thousand. Okay, so now I've I've tacked those. Um, hopefully that that's a that's a fairly permanent tack for those. Um, and and I got a fan and I started to talk about this. Um, if you are doing a lot of soldering, uh, as I have done over the years, uh, one of the things that that you find as you get up in years, like I am. Um, that uh, and I didn't realize this. I mean, obviously, if I had, I would have done something about it sooner. But um, the the rosin after the years takes takes a toll on your sinuses and and many other things. And so they make these fans and are really cool. I've got a model ZD153A fan. It took me a while to get it, um, and it's sitting right here by the thing. And again, I didn't turn it on. I'll turn it on again so you can kind of kind of hear it, but. Uh, I'll show it to you in the video and later. The the fan itself is there to suck the rosin, and so the smoke that comes up is what's bad, and it creates some carcinogenic, but uh, also some acidic things in your sinuses. It destroys your sinuses, is the short short response here. And because it destroys your sinuses, you you kind of want to avoid that. Um, you know, <laughs> yeah, yeah, kind of. Hello. So, um, so I, I bought a fan, and it's uh, it's too late for me. I mean, I'm I've been doing this forever, and I, it, a good thing I don't work every day. If you worked every day in an environment where you're soldering, uh, you, the the companies already know this, and they have these fans that are that are in your your area. But if you're a hobbyist and you don't really do that that often. Um, this may not be a problem for you either, but uh, so here's where the here's where these pins. So we see the see the pins here, and they're offset. So they want you to put it on a certain way. Here's the here's a pin 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 pin. Let me see if you can see this right. Let's put it up here where you can see it. There you go. Uh, pin pin, and then pin pin. There, there it's focusing now. You can see them. And then you see the slots here, see them? One, two, okay, those slots. So this has to line up with the, those pins have to line up with the slots. See it? And so they are, they're more towards the front. So in that situation, right, that's the way it should go? Yes, no? Well, they don't seem to line up right, so I'm going to turn it around, right? And again, the pins have to line up, and guess what? Yeah, that's the that's the way it goes, just like that. All right. Now, somebody's put an orange dot on there for identification. Oftentimes, people write numbers and stuff on it, but the orange dot means this is mine. It's orange. Yours is blue. Whatever. Okay. Um, Sometimes there's other reasons for that. They may have bought it at some sale someplace, and so somebody put an orange dot on it for ID. All right, and we're going to put the put the top on. Uh, not a big problem here. We just snap the top, and just it just folds on there like that. 
And basically we're done. Now, one of the things I did not do while I was in there was lube it. So I'm going to take it back off again and I'm going to do the lube uh, just again so you get a picture of how that's done. We did a couple of freds, but we never really did an end scale locomotive. I think I showed you some of the some of the lubes that we use here in the training buddy shop, uh, my aero car. Uh, they're not made for us specifically, but um, Harry Caney, my, my good good buddy there, that vendor, aero car, um, makes uh, makes a lot of these these chemicals. And of course, this is this is from the from my stash here. This is not a, a for sale item. This is what we got. But this is a lifetime supply of of grease for for engines. You can see how much I've used out of this, and I do this all the time. So we're going to go ahead and, and put a little bit of that in there. I'm just going to use a uh, use that that screwdriver I had, and this is actually a, a a gear grease. So we can actually see the worms down inside there. I'm just going to touch it. I'm going to touch that worm with with a little bit of grease, and touch this worm with a little bit of grease, and that's more than sufficient for these guys to handle any situation. The other the other thing that's important here is the is conductive lube and so the pickups um, you can use this to clean your wheels with uh, but more important is right here where the where the the truck actually meets that piece of piece of brass all right we need to drop there and of course we need it on on every place where those things pick up here here right here right here on the other side, just a dot, right? Not much. All right, and then we need. Um, we we could put grease down here. Notice the gears are exposed. I tell people this all the time in an N scale locomotive. The gears are exposed. Hello, hello. Um, you know you can't have anything on your track. These gears will suck it up like this, and immediately they'll stop. Uh, you'll destroy an in-scale engine faster than anything by just having garbage on your track. So sweeping your track on a regular basis is very important. Um, I'm going to go ahead and put the top back on now. Again, I've done a minor, minor job. I haven't cleaned the wheels. Okay, Cleaning the wheels is something that I do on the track using a cleaning solution. All right. And we should be done. Ta-da. Finish, finish, finish. Thanks for watching. Uh, please subscribe, and I'll do the um, I'll do the SD uh, SD what is it SD seventy? I'll do the SD sixty next. Thanks.